This morning, there were showers of blessing in California. I hope there is a showers of blessing in your heart too. So if you guys could sing aloud with Pastor, I've got peace like a river. Sing aloud together. One, two, three. I've got peace like a river. Louder. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. Hey, you know, God gave us like big, big love like an ocean. We need to share more than just this one, you know. As we grow older, we will see. What about joy like a fountain? Why is joy like a fountain? What happens to the fountain? Huh? Okay. What happens to the fountain? What is a fountain? Okay, overflow and it goes out, right? When you have joy, what, what do you do? Yeah, when you have joy, you start laughing, right? <laughs> I'm so happy, you know? It flows out of you. And one person laughs, the other person is like contagious, like, oh, it must be funny, wow, you know? Happy. So you don't keep the joy and love just this much, but you share and let it flow out so other people could share that joy and love that is in you, okay? Let's sing another song. What did the, what was the heart in that song? The castle, open up the castle, and the king, who's the king? Residence. King is the residence? God. King residence. Who is king? Jesus. God. God is resident. What does it mean by residence? Nice. It's a big word, huh? Responsibility, lots of RE words, right? Teacher Jennifer, what does residence mean? Where you live. Exactly. So if the king is in residence there, that means king is what? King is living there. Are you going to let the servant live in there? No. Are you going to let the serpent live in there? What is a serpent? Snake. Snake. Are you going to let, I don't know, Boba live in there? We're going to allow the king to live in there because your heart, your body is not just a place to live, it's a castle. Where does, who lives in the castle? Elena? Who lives in the castle? God, the king. So let's open up the residence of the king to come into your heart and live. All right, before we sing our last song, let's have a word of prayer. Is anybody having any prayer requests? You know what, I want to ask God to help me in this. Anybody, prayer request? Yes? Help me on the SAT six years later. Six years later, okay, pray early, that's good. Jolene. Oh, your dad's daddy's foot. Oh, what a good girl. Okay. Good girl. What else? Hey. SAT and daddy's foot. Good daughter. <laughs> Anybody? Prayer request. Thank you. Oh, yeah, let's give God an explanation and everything. Okay. Everybody put your hands together. Let's bow our hands and pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that we are able to talk to you. We have our antennas up. We have our mobile phone on. And this is a conversation that we do through prayer, Lord. This morning, we would like to lift up some of the prayer requests. But the very first prayer request that we would like to do is that we thank you and we praise you because you are our Father and our Creator. Secondly, we would like to ask you, even though we're little, we're just children, forgive us of all our sins. If we were hateful to others, if we were jealous, if we were not nice to our brothers and sisters, God this morning, forgive us. Amen. And thirdly, if it is your will, Lord, listen to our prayer request. Give us wisdom as we study tests and many things that we learn at school, especially SAT that is coming up in six years. Be with us. Amen. Mm. Also, be with our parents. They are always helpful to us. They give us everything and show us God's love. If they are sick, be with them. Especially be with Jolene's dad's foot this morning. Also, we 
we praise you and we love you dearly for giving us the showers of blessing over Los Angeles and um, Yorba Linda. Everywhere there was rain. Give us more rain if it is your will, Lord. Amen. As we open your word this morning, give us wisdom and guidance. In the name of Jesus we pray. Say that with me, Jesus. Jesus loves us. Loves us. us. And takes care of us. And takes care, care of us. us. Yes, takes care of us. Yes. Yes. Jesus loves me. 한번 노래 해볼까 우리? Yes. 시작. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus. And you do not practice truth. 
when you read it in the Word, it's very clear. But also when I look into myself, it's so scary because the Bible is too clear. I tell myself and I tell my family and I tell my church family that I fellowship with Jesus and I walk with God. But how come in my life, there's so many times that I find myself in the darkness. And first John, John is keep on saying, if your life is darkness, you know, you are a liar because if you're walking with the light, God himself, you shouldn't have any darkness. But God, my job is a pastor, I do my best, but how come I experience darkness here and there every now and then? How come, just like Elder Daniel said, devil's job is to, to, to wrap those sin in the most colorful paper, sparkly, shiny, and I want to just grab on it, and as soon as I fall for the temptation, I suddenly see the darkness in me, and when I reflect myself in this verse, God is light and there's no darkness at all. But if you walk with God, there shouldn't be any darkness in your life. But how come I am experiencing darkness in my life? And the Bible says that I'm a liar. It seems like when you read the Bible, the Bible is so clear. Many times when I compare myself to the Bible, I get discouraged. And I also get disappointed in myself. And I hit myself and say, I need to do that, you know. But after that, several days later, you find yourself into the very same temptation again. And you fall for it again. And then again. And then again. This morning, my sermon title is this. Quantity over quality. Quantity over quality. As soon as I gave you the sermon title, I could see many of your eyes go, hmm, quantity over quality? Pastor Enoch, I'm more for quality over quantity. What do you mean by quantity over quality? You know, in my own house, I am quantity, and my wife Jay is quality. For example, Enoch is Walmart, Jay is Target. Quantity, quality. When Enoch is more for Ross, Jay is like Marshalls. Quantity over quality. When Enoch says, let's go to Albertsons for ice cream, Jay says, haagen Quantity over quality. When Enoch says all you can eat, Jay says preset menu, quantity over quality. But when people are to say quantity over quality, most of the people will say, ah, oh, too cheap, not good. Poor people. But this morning I come before you in the title of Quantity Over Quality when it comes to the relationship with Jesus. Just listen carefully. In the Bible there is a lady named Martha. Martha was sister of who? Mary and Lazarus. Martha, whenever Jesus was around, she always was in the kitchen cooking hard and you see that lazy sister of hers, Mary, sitting in front of Jesus listening to the story of Jesus and Martha is always working away preparing dinner for the special guest who is at home. But later on Martha finally came out of the kitchen and she had learned herself what is it so important to sit in front of Jesus at her feet and now she said you know what work later listen to Jesus Christ and then she was sitting next to Mary. She was up for the spiritual food and she 
let the physical food be the second priority. But when, her, when the time where her brother died, when her brother's tomb was closed, and for several days she could smell her brother rotting in the tomb, and Jesus was not doing anything for her brother, what happened to Martha's faith? She gave up her kitchen and she came in front of Jesus and she knelt down and she listened. But still, for two days, nothing was happening to her brother. Her faith was wavering. She had that initial quality experience with Jesus. At first, she thought, you know, cooking up a great meal. But you know what? She learned her priority through her sister Mary that she had to be sitting in front of Jesus Christ. That the quality relationship with Jesus was very, very important. But as soon as her brother dies and her brother was rotting in the tomb, her faith was starting to waver and say, is Jesus really the life? That one experience of the quality was wavered when quantity wasn't there. Abraham was God's special friend. God promised that Abraham was going to be blessed with many nations and many people and many children. So Abraham said, you know what, God, what a great relationship that we have. You promised me the great future for me. You said you're going to give me many, many, many children. So I thank you. A quality experience is going on. A quality relationship is going on. Because God said you're going to bless me. I will follow you. But how many years did Abraham not have children? Up to 90 plus years, God did not fulfill the promise. So his relationship with God kind of weathered. So he went to another woman and he had another child thinking that he was helping God. But later on, God kept his promise. And because of that fault, move of Abraham to have another woman to help God, that two families will arise and up to these days in Israel those two people are fighting against each other. What about Moses? A quality leader. A quality experience with God. He was a leader for the Israelites. He was a prophet. He, he actually saw God face to face. His hair changed white. He had a quality initial experience with God. He led his people for 40 years in the desert. For 40 years, he had quality experience, but what did he do? In front of the promised land, in front of the promised land. For 40 years, he led, but right in front of the promised land, his faith failed. And he has sinned so publicly and so unmistakably that he could not make it into the promised land. One day, one time, a great quality experience of God is not enough. Coming to church on Sabbath, you hear the greatest sermon of Doug Bachelor, you know, not pastor enough, but our senior pastor, and you have that great spiritual experience one day out of the seven day week. We feel like that's enough. One quality time with God, we feel like that's enough. But growth in the Christian life is to learn to depend upon God more and more daily, every step of the way. One day, one great time, one great quality time of God is not enough. There are many Christians who say, once saved, always saved. There are many Christian churches who will emphasize, you know what, just come inside the church. 
Make yourself into the church. Get baptized. You're saved all the way. One quality experience with God. Go to the baptistry and come out and everybody clap at you and have a great experience. That spiritual high, that's good enough. But you know what? When it comes to the experience with God, one quality experience is not enough. But daily walk with God, the quantity does matter. So 1 John chapter 5 and 6, I mean chapter 1 verse 5 and 6, it says, if you walk with God, you're in the light. But if you have darkness in your life, that you are a liar and you do not live in truth. But Father God, we are humans, we fall, we experience darkness. Is there any other solution? Brothers and sisters, it's good to read one verse from the Bible, but if you read the entire chapter, many of the times you will get your answer, uh, your questions answered. If you read the entire book, more questions could be answered. If you read the entire Bible, then you get to see the whole picture of God. So if you read only one verse and you get discouraged and disappointed because you're not a perfect being, read the rest of the chapter. Read the entire book of the Bible because always God challenges you and always there is a solution for you to walk with. So it feels like verse 5 and 6, God is so perfect, and if we make mistakes here and there, it seems like we become a liar, and we become a people who do not practice truth. But God is always there with the solution of people who are like us, who always fall for the temptation, and who always have trouble sometimes visiting the darkness every now and then. And verse 7, 8, and 9, there is the solution of God, where we sometimes visit darkness here and there. And it says in verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8, If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. You know, verse 5 and 6 kind of scared us because God is too good. God is too bright. God is light and there is no darkness at all. And he said, if we fellowship with him, that we will be in the light. But every now and then we visit the darkness. And so we were so worried. But God said, there is a solution for you, for the people who want to walk in the darkness. But every now and then we fall for that temptation and we experience the darkness. It says, as soon as we experience sin, verse 9 says, confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know the downfall of the modern Christian is this. That we don't confess enough to God. We love to ask for forgiveness. God, forgive me. But we don't talk to God about the sin that we have committed and the steps for us to get out in front of God. We don't confess enough. You know, I love my sons dearly, my four-year-old Jason and my one-year-old Anthony. I love them dearly, but half of the time, they're the biggest troublemaker. They're so lovely when they're sleeping. They're so cute when they're just out of the shower and clean. But 90% of the time, they're not clean. <laughs> Nine, not 90%, but like 60% of the time, they're not sleeping. <laughs> so why do I deal with this non-sleeping, not clean baby? 
My one-year-old son, Anthony, he's the king of the universe. His four-year-old Jason comes, punches him, gets scar all over Jason, a scar here and there. And one day, Jason decided to, okay, revenge time. Anthony was running, he pushed him really hard, and his head was just, boom, right there, and he got a big old cut. And some of you saw his band-aid for a couple of days. And then he's crying. Jason, for the first time, he saw blood. You know, he's just like, you know, Cain and Abel. For the first creation of the human race, they've never seen blood. You know, Jason never experienced red stuff gushing out of his brother's eyes. Blood all over, Anthony cries and going crazy, and Jason just thought, you know, he would just get up and be fine, but for the first time, blood everywhere. Daddy is going crazy, mommy is like, Jason is in panic mode. But the first thing that grandma and mommy did, let's pray. This panic mode, everything suddenly just, everybody, like Anthony and Jason, for the first time in my life, they were so serious because saw, they saw this red liquid everywhere. They were like, <laughs> They were so, so worried. As soon as the prayer was done, the bandit was put on, Jason, Anthony and Jason, they're hugging each other. Miale, miale, you know? The very interesting thing about God and us is the same way. God doesn't look at you as a 45-year-old. God doesn't look at you as a 51-year-old. God doesn't look at you as a college freshman. God, doesn't, God looks at you as a baby. He, you are his child, and anytime you come to him and confess and say, Miyane God, I'm sorry, Daddy, forgive me. Oh. He is more than wanting to forgive your sin, but so many times we hold on to that confession long later on. You commit sin, you're ashamed, but you don't talk to God about it right away. The Bible says we have to be like the child. We will fall and we will visit the darkness every now and then or every so often. We, God knows that we fall. But the falling part is not important, but the confessing part that is very important. You go to your father and confess of your sin. Go to your prayer. Kneel down and let him know that you have messed up. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We abide in Christ day by day. It's not once saved, always saved. But we abide in Him day by day, minute by minute, second by second, because we need Him to forgive us continuously. Amen. We need Him to give us the guidance continuously. We want God to control and give us the protection continuously, day by day, abide in Him. Amen. Steps to Christ, the writing of Ellen G. White. She says, Then how am I to abide in Christ? How am I, how am I going to abide in Christ? It says, In the same way you have received him at first. The very first time you have decided to give your life. The very first time you have fallen in love with Jesus Christ. If not Jesus Christ, the very first time you have fallen in love with your parents. Or the very first time you have fallen in love with your husband and wife. The very first time you have fallen in love with your boyfriend and her girlfriend. The very first experience that you remember. Go back. As you have therefore received Christ. Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, the just 
shall live by faith. You know, I love the word that God is the God of justice. God of justice. And it says, you and I will live by faith because we are just. You know, when we hear the word justice, it sounds like two the lawyer and then the judge. It sounds too law-likeness. But I love the word just, justice. I love it more than equal. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a little picture that's been going around in the Facebook page. There's a difference between equality and justice. This Facebook picture shows there's a little one-year-old baby, there is a teenager, and there is a six-foot-tall adult. They're watching a baseball game, and they experience these two pictures. One is equality, and one is justice, okay? And equality is everybody gets the same amount of height of stepping stone so they can look over the fence and watch the baseball game. The baby gets 50 centimeter high stall, the teenager gets the 50 centimeter high stall, and then the adult gets 50 centimeter high stall to look over the fence. Would the one-year-old baby be enough, tall enough to look over the fence? No. With the teenager, kind of, the adult for sure. That is called equality. Everybody gets 50 cents worth of some sort of help to look over the fence. That's called equality. But God is not for equality. God is not a communist, but God is for justice. No. And when you look at the side of the justice fence, there you see the baby getting three blocks of 50 centimeter tall stool. So the baby could look over the fence. The teenager only gets two 50 centimeter stall, so he gets to look over the fence. But the six foot four adult does not get any help. But he still is able to look over the fence. That is called justice. God says, just shall live by faith. And God says, through his justice, he will forgive our sin. We are not a people who is looking for equality. Oh, you make million bucks? So God, give me a million dollar blessing too, because you have to be all equal. No, brothers and sisters, God knows where you are, and God sees where you're at, and God is going to customize the blessing just for you. No other people will have the same blessing. God wants to put his fingerprint on that blessing, customize that blessing, and say, I want to give it to you. But the very interesting thing is, the very blessing that you're going to receive, the fruit is going to be custom designed. He has his fingerprint on, and it is just designed for you and I, as long as we, what? Abide. Abide. It's not a quality experience, but it's about continual quantity experience. You know, if you had the best sandwich, you know, I just had the best sandwich at the outdoor worship past Sabbath. You know, Key created this custom sandwich for our church. It was so good, so key, I'm gonna visit your store, <laughs> downtown LA, tall skyscraper, everybody come visit with me, okay? <laughs> he just custom designed for our church family. That's why it was good. But if you were to make those generic whatever sandwich that you could feed like your 10 million people made from the factory, no people touches the robot machine cuts it. There is no warmth. You know, there is that no no key flavor from the fingers, you know what I mean? That's not customized. That's called equality. Everybody in the world is shouting for equality, equality. But you know what? What God wants is justice be done. And we are the people who are... But if we say we don't have sins, we are deceiving ourselves because we are being that falls over and over and over again. Then how we walk in the light, even though we fall for darkness over and over again. 
we confess that he is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters, this coming week, this coming New Year 2015, what God wants from you is not a perfect Christian. What is he's not looking for a sinless being. But what God wants you to do is first abide. Not a quality time. Quantity and quality time. What God wants is a eternal relationship, not just a great quality relationship you have in the initial Christian days and let you be alone. No. But a quantity relationship, abiding relationship, living relationship, walking with relationship, and let God reside inside you, your heart. Growth in Christian life takes place as we continue to live by faith in Him. Faith includes forgiveness. Faith includes God's forgiveness in your life. Brothers and sisters, come to Jesus Christ day by day. Don't say that, well, Sabbath is the seventh day, it's a day of holiness, so Sunday I might be able to do whatever. No. It didn't say in the Bible, if you worship every day, it's a bad thing. Worship every day in, with your, within your family, with your friends. Have that daily continuous of renewal and forgiveness in your life. Yes, Jason and Anthony could fight. Yes, maybe he and I could have a fight. Or maybe Albert and Ben might have a bad day. But you know what? That bad days, the darkness moment, is temporary as soon as you turn to him and say, Yeah. Maybe just like Anthony and Jason, you can go each other, whatever. But what I'm saying is, what God wants from my life, make mistakes, but come to him with confession and pray. Let us go our heads. Father, Martha, Abraham, Moses, Samson, Adam, Paul, Hezekiah, Peter, Jacob, so many people in the Bible, they had a greatest initial quality time with you, that you have called them to be prophets, you have called them to be disciples, you have called them to be the leaders, but they fall over and over and over. But we've learned from the Bible it's not the falling part that matters, but it's the part where they come and confess and stand up back again and be embraced by you ultimately. Lord, help us to abide in you. Help us to be forgiven and help us to come before you like a child and confess our sins before you. Help our prayer lives to be alive. Help us Help our prayer life to be like breathing continually. Help us to pray without ceasing. Bless Glendale Korean Church English Ministry. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's time for our offering. Thank you, minus. Coral, green, red, blue. You got lots of cars. Three cars. You have three cars. Yeah. Yeah. Three cars. Yeah, Jetta. Share? Share? Yeah, I'm so
Okay. Okay. Nona. Nona. This Nona. That Nona. Ipun Nona. Pretty Nona. Thank you. Thank you, Luna. Have a Thank you, okay? Thank you, okay? Oh, 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 Ah, this is a new that it was matter found in the way. Oh, I had that. I didn't know. 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 Go. You go. You go. Wow, I'm the pine. You are the branches. If you are in me, me and I'm in you. Oh. Oh. More charger. What's it? Take it to you and I want to go. Oh. 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 Oh.
church. Please abide with your church members, your family, my family, my all kids. Thank you for blessing your, for your kids. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm 